Hello guys, so today we'll be focused about lighting. Lighting product like this puffer I do. I model it in Marvelous Designer and we will be focused about lighting. Um, I am not a specialist about lighting, but I think I begin to uh, having some knowledge about it. So I want to show you uh, some things I under and um, understanding during this time. So lighting is using for two points. First point is used to make a good understanding of volume. Um, as you can see, if we go on my Cinema 4D file, um, and if I press render without any lighting, So you see, without any lighting, we understand it's a jacket, but it's not interesting uh, visually. Um, we don't understand how we are on the scene and how the volume interacts with the real world. So first point, lighting is very important for understanding volume of your product. And second point, lighting is used to create an ambient. What you want to tell about story uh, for your stills, for your product. And is used for many kinds of lighting. So for this example, as you can see, uh, this Sony L8 phone, it's very technical approach of the stills. It's for merch, uh, library, uh, sailing, so it's very professional lighting with very smooth uh, ambience and very calm. But not really, uh, not much artistical intention on it because it's only for sale and show the product. That's it. Uh, here's another intention of lighting is outdoor. Outdoor lighting. So we want to, to show uh, a peaceful, and colorful ambience uh, for this croc. So it's completely different approach. As you can see on the product, there is some reflection from the env environment. So it's a daylight lighting, uh, completely different approach and it works really well for what it is used for. And for this one, uh, it's also like a studio lighting with artistical approach, uh, like surrealism, we can see on all painter, you see with this nice gradient here. Um, yeah, for me, it's modern uh, painting oil art. Like you can, uh, you, you have seen, if you know a little bit story uh, about art, about painter, Le, Le Caravage, think like this. Uh, we use a strong light with dark area. And that will make this illustration so interesting because there is a lot of contrast. So we will be focused about this one for today. Okay, so here we are on our scene. So it's a very simple scene, as you can see, our buffer jacket here, um, um, a plain background here, and a floor for reflection here. So my background got very simple texture with uh, just one color diffuse and no reflection, nothing, just diffuse color. And as you can see, this nice gradient is not made with texture, it's made with, with light. We're using a light, like here, place here, to jump here and to create this gradient. So very lighty here and dark here. 
we use a light because this way, let's press render to see how it looks. Because this way, it's much more realistic and interesting. Um, because our gradient will be much more smoother as we use the texture. And as you can see, there is some reflecting with product. And so the product and the background merge much more better together this way. Uh, as you can see in my BG light, I use the include mode and it's just inter inter interact with my scene, so my background and my floor. But as you can see, some reflectivity because light bouncing on my plane and that makes this nice uh, reflection on the top and bottom extremity of my product. Yeah, so I begin always with my with my light for my background. So uh, next uh, I know where I can go next. Um, after I've got a BG, uh, dome light, I've got a dome light. With if we go on our settings, very, very small intensity just for give, give some uh, reflection information to my product. Because, as you can see, it's very smooth uh, dome light with some uh, information lighting from everywhere around the scene. It's not a strong uh, dome light as we can use sometimes for, for our specific lighting. Here are using just for give some information. You see, I decrease a lot of my intensity and my saturation. Because my strong lighting will be used with area light. So dome light for this kind, just for give some information. Next, I've got a rim light to give this nice line so this line will intersect um, with product and give a, a little bit more understanding the silhouette of our product so it will um, be much more good separate between background and our product and as you can see shape of my area line is about the same shape than my product. So that's why the light line can begin exactly what I want here and finish exactly what I want here. And you have to play with intensity to, to having something strong, but not so strong for the light still be uh, good even when you will be adjusting next. Um, after I've got a rim left, same principle, but for my left side, yeah. So now we we start having something interesting. Next, I've got a key light. So as you can see, this key light, I place it on the left side and a little bit from uh, the back of my, my scene. And I place it for, we feel volume here. You see, you place your light about all your product volume R. I want to, to see this nice light line, invisible line of my product. You see a puffer is curvy model. So I want to, 
make a little bit more feeling about this curvy shape. So my my key light is that the light will be drastically important for understanding volume of my product. And for finish, we've got our fill light line, as you can see here, and a fill bottom light. To give some information here, and don't be too dramatic of what I want to to say to the to the visualizator, to the to the spectator. I want something dramatic, but not too much. I still want something uh, quite um, good looking and not too dramatic. So the fill light is for attenuate um, filling of our key light. But as you can see, this dark area li a light we've got because uh, nothing, no area light from the, the front are really, really important. So this is a, a kind of lighting you can use for every product. And this is this variation of dark area, dark area and bright area that will make your, your steels um, appreciable and interesting. Uh, yeah, and last time on my redshift uh, parameters, um, I using a LUT, so you can <coughs> create your own LUT or see on the internet it's a basic setup, but you can also do adjustment on After Effects, and I play with, as you can see, my F stop, by default is uh, something like eight, I think. And yeah, I play with my desktop to make it something much more bright. So I try to go um, the most closer I have my finite render and on my last adjustment, I will export it to After Effects for the final. Yeah, so I, as you can see, is our Vanilla render from uh, Cinema 4D and Redshift. And here is my adjustment using in After Effects. So you think it's quite good improving um, using After Effects adjustments. Uh, so I like to use Lumetri Color and play with uh, my exposure. Temperature also, because uh, at first it's brown, something low, a range with temperature, you can even more accentuate this uh, warm feeling. Oh. Sometimes good to use temperature adjustment to increase uh, the feeling. Like if I, you use something like blue, bluish render, uh, you will decrease temperature to having uh, like this cold and fresh feeling. Me here, I want something really warm and creamy, so I increase temperature. Also exposure, as you can see, uh, it was too dark, so I increase exposure. Um, and I seen much of the time, we we are quite f uh, good for our saturation, but. HU, HU uh, saturation, but always need to tweak a little bit. As you see, on my vanilla render, it was too yellow, in fact. So, with accentuate by minus five uh, or HUE, we've got even more creamy volume. So, good to tweak with HUE. Uh, 
uh, on your fan eye render and sometimes you will be surprised how it look better with few less or few more on your channel range. Uh, yes, last time I like to to play on my creative is my sharpen. Yeah, it's like um, I pass in a Photoshop. It will boost your detail. If I zoom in, as you can see, and I say maybe 100, you see it will boost much, much more the detail. Guys, tell me if you like it in comments and uh, see you next time.